Welcome back to DLS 105, Risk Tools and Calculations for Risk Assessments. I'm Bart Best from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Risk Management Center, and this is Module 6, Semi-Quantitative Risk Assessment and Demonstration of RMC SQRA Calcs. After completing this module, course participants should be able to demonstrate how to calculate and portray the risk for semi-quantitative risk assessments, or SQRA, and demonstrate how to use the RMC SQRA Calc spreadsheet. This presentation will start with a discussion of semi-quantitative risk assessment calculations and portrayal. From there, we will go through an overview of the RMC SQRA Calc spreadsheet. And lastly, we will work through a guided exercise of the RMC SQRA Calc spreadsheet. Let's dive into semi-quantitative risk assessment calculations and portrayal. This course has previously discussed calculations and plots for quantitative risk assessments. Now let's take a quick look at how things change for semi-quantitative risk assessments. For SQRAs, the risks are plotted on a life safety risk matrix very similar to the little fm plot. Order of magnitude estimates are made for the annual probability of failure and average life loss for each PFM. The order of magnitude estimates are plotted as boxes on the matrix. The total failure probability and average life loss are calculated from the average PFM estimates using the center of the order of magnitude box as a point estimate. Because risk estimates are portrayed and evaluated in logarithmic space, a geometric mean is used to calculate the point estimate at the center of the box. Consider the following example. We are given an APF with an order of magnitude estimate ranging from 1 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1 times 10 to the minus 2. The geometric mean can be calculated by taking the square root of the product of the values that define the range or by using the geomean function in Microsoft Excel. For example, the geometric mean is 3 times 10 to the minus 3, which is equal to the square root of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 1 times 10 to the minus 2. Once we have the geometric means to work with, we can then calculate the total annual probability of failure, average annual life loss, and average incremental life loss. The total APF is calculated by simply summing APF point estimates for all PFMs. This assumes the PFMs are mutually exclusive. Similarly, the AALL is calculated by summing the average annual life loss values for all PFMs. Lastly, the total average incremental life loss is calculated as the weighted average of the life loss for all PFMs by dividing the total average annual life loss by the total annual probability of failure. Now we have an example to pull everything together. We are given two failure modes, PFM1 and PFM2. To calculate the total APF, we sum the APF geometric means 3 times 10 to the minus 3 and 3 times 10 to the minus 4 to get a total of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 3. The total average annual life loss is then equal to the APF times N for PFM1 plus the APF times N for PFM2. So we multiply 3 times 10 to the minus 3 by 3 and add that to the product of 3 times 10 to the minus 4 and 300 to get 9.9 .9 times 10 to the minus 2. The average life loss is then equal to the average annual life loss divided by the APF, which gives us a value of 30. With an APF of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 3 and an M bar of 30, the total risk is best represented by the red box, which has an APF range of 1 times 10 to the minus 3 to 1 times 10 to the minus 2 and an average life loss ranging from 10 to 100. For semi-quantitative risk assessments, the individual risk is estimated and is done by using APF as a proxy. The individual life safety risk will always be less than or equal to the APF, so using the APF is a conservative but reasonable estimate. The individual life safety risk is plotted on a simple matrix as shown to the left. This brings us to the first exercise for Module 6. In this exercise, you are asked to use the given potential failure modes and corresponding annual probability of failure and average life loss values to calculate and plot the total APF and AALL, including the individual life safety risk. Please pause the video and take a moment to work through this exercise. When you are finished, press play for the solution. Column D and F provides the APF range, and you are asked to determine the mean in column G. 
This can be done by either taking the square root of the product of the lower range and upper range of the APF, or by using the geomean function in Excel, where number one is the APF lower and number two is the APF upper. After dragging the formulas down, here are the results for the APF mean. For column K, you would do the same thing to determine the mean for the average life loss range given in columns H and J. Now that we have calculated all the mean values, we need to calculate the AALL for each PFM. This is done by multiplying the APF mean by the average life loss mean. Drag the formula down and you get the values shown here for AALL. Now it's time to calculate the APF total, AALL total, and N. The APF total is a sum of all the mean values in column G and the AALL total is the sum of the mean values in column L. The weighted average incremental life loss is equal to the AALL total in H17 divided by the APF total in H16. Using the results of the now completed table, you can plot the individual PFMs with the blue boxes and the total with the red box on the life safety risk matrix and the total APF for the individual risk. Note that you can drag and drop these text boxes on the exercise sheet. Here are the results of exercise 6.1. Note that PFM1 plots in the same box as the total. For levees, we calculate the residual flood inundation in order to make a recommendation for the National Flood Insurance Program accreditation. For NFIP purposes, the AEP of the residual flood inundation is the total annual probability that the levee will be inundated due to levee breach prior to overtopping, component malfunction or improper operation, or overtopping without breach. To avoid double counting, overtopping with breach is excluded from the calculations. Therefore, the estimated mean annual probability of inundation, or API, of the levied area requires combining the APF for all prior to overtopping risk driving PFMs, APF POT, with the annual probability of inundation due to overtopping without breach, APINB. Based on the results of the risk assessment, USACE will provide an accreditation recommendation for the levy system in the National Flood Insurance Program. If the estimated mean API is greater than 1 times 10 to the minus 2, USACE will make a recommendation that the levy system not be accredited. If the estimated mean API is less than 1 times 10 to the minus 3, USACE will make a recommendation that the levy system be accredited subject to any remaining data gaps required by FEMA, such as interior drainage. If the estimated mean API is between 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and 1 times 10 to the minus 2, the results will be inconclusive. An inconclusive rating based on API is subject to further evaluation or analysis in order to determine if accreditation can be recommended. This brings us to our second exercise for this session, Levy NFIP. For this exercise, we are using the same PFMs, APF, and average life loss values from exercise 6.1. The values in columns G, K, and L in exercise 6.2 populate based on the results from the exercise 6.1 spreadsheet. Note, the green highlighted cells contain formulas that pull data from exercise 6.1. In addition, you have been provided the annual probability of inundation due to overtopping without breach, API and B. You are asked to calculate the annual probability of failure prior to overtopping, APF total, total annual probability of inundation, API total, and make a recommendation for NFIP accreditation. Please pause this video and take a moment to work through this exercise. When you are finished, press play for the solution. Based on the results of exercise 6.1, you should have the data shown. Note that the potential failure modes now have additional short description to provide you with additional details for the next calculation. The first step is to calculate the APF for all prior to overtopping risk driving PFMs, APF POT. Remember, for NFIP purposes, the total annual probability that the levied area will be inundated is due to levy breach prior to overtopping component malfunction or improper operation. To avoid double counting, overtopping with breach is excluded from the calculations. 
For this calculation, we are using APF total from exercise 1 and removing the APF for PFM1, overtopping with breach. Next, we calculate the total mean annual probability of inundation, APF total, which combines the APF for all prior to overtopping risk driving potential failure modes, APF POT, with the annual probability of inundation due to overtopping without breach, APINB. Finally, we use the results of the total mean annual probability of inundation, API total, to make a recommendation for NFIP. Since the API total is between 1 times 10 to the minus 3 and 1 times 10 to the minus 2, the results will be inconclusive and subject to further evaluation or analysis. Now that we understand the calculations behind a semi-quantitative risk assessment and how to portray the results, we can go through the RMC SQA Calc spreadsheet. First, let's talk about the location of the RMC SQA Calc spreadsheet. The current version of the spreadsheet is located on the RMC software website, www.rmc.usace.army.mil forward slash software. From the RMC Software and Tools website, you will select Risk Calculation Suite. This will lead you to the RMC Risk Calculation Suite page, where you will select RMC Semi-Quantitative Risk Assessment SQA Calculations Toolbox. Now that you have the RMC SQA Calc Spreadsheet, let's go through a quick overview to orient you to the spreadsheet. The RMC SQA Calc Spreadsheet contains tools to assess the total incremental risk, non-breach risk for dams, and overtopping incremental and non-breach risk for levees. The total mean annual probability of inundation of the levied area is assessed for NFIP accreditation recommendation. The RMC SQA Calc Spreadsheet uses visual basic functions to perform calculations, so macros must be enabled. A stepwise approach is used for most calculation worksheets in which complex analysis is broken down into smaller computational steps following a logical sequence. Some simpler worksheets will not have steps. User notes and plot formatting generally appear in the right-hand margin of each calculation worksheet. Some notes appear in blue or red font for heightened awareness. These notes include instructions for use or additional descriptions. At the bottom of the majority of the worksheets, there is a caution banner to not delete any rows below. Those cells contain formulas used in the above tool. Do not add worksheets to this workbook. Unexpected results could unknowingly occur due to formulas that contain references to other worksheet names. If additional scenarios are required to be evaluated, such as with and without intervention, make a copy of this workbook. Yellow highlighted cells represent inputs and green highlighted cells represent existing calculations that can be modified based on available data. All other cells contain formulas. Users should be aware that modifications to any of these formulas could have unintended consequences. This worksheet is pre-populated with an example. This is done to help the user see how the worksheet works. The Levy Overtopping Life Safety Risk Tool contains five steps. Step one is to assess the overtopping flood hazard and consequences. The user needs to determine the day and night consequence exposure weights, which will correspond to a fraction of time for which the life loss estimate applies. After determining the exposure rates, the user will need to fill in the tables with available data associated with the overtopping events, depth, AEP, and consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. This is done for the breach and non-breach conditions. The first overtopping event that should be entered is the incipient overtopping event. The incipient overtopping event is the time at which water will first begin to overtop the levee. Thus, the depth and frequency of the event are associated with the top of levee. The consequences for this event are not shown as an input because the worksheet is set up to use the first overtopping depth that is evaluated because the MMC SOP does not evaluate an incipient overtopping event. And the top of levy breach life loss is for breach prior to overtopping with different breach parameters and warning assumptions. If the team were to have developed an incipient overtopping scenario as part of the study, that data can be used to replace the equations in the green highlighted cells. The following the incipient overtopping data, the worksheet allows five additional overtopping depths to be entered into the table. 
Once an overtopping depth is entered into column D, the overtopping event name will populate based on the depth entered. The user will need to populate columns D to G for a given event. Once the overtopping events have been entered, the user must populate the incremental flood loading limit and or the maximum flood load below the double line. After the populating the breach overtopping table, the user should populate the non-breach overtopping table in the same manner. The overtopping depth and corresponding AEP from the breach table are automatically populated in the non-breach table. The incipient overtopping non-breach life loss is set to zero. Note that if data is not available, then the cell should be left blank. Now that all the data has been entered into step one, the incremental overtopping table is calculated from the breach and non-breach tables. The user then needs to determine if it is reasonable to extrapolate overtopping depth and AEP to where breach and non-breach consequences are equal. A drop-down list is provided in cell C54. The results of step one are shown in a graph and the right margin allows the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds for display purposes. Step two is to estimate the system response curve for overtopping with breach. This requires the user to input up to five overtopping depths into the table and the corresponding system response probability. The results of the table are used to generate a chart of the system response probability and overtopping depth. Options in the right-hand margin allow the users to adjust the bounds of the X and Y axis for display purposes. Step three estimates the overtopping, non-breach, and incremental levy risk. The data tables are generated from the data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for this step. The data tables will be used in step four. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for non-breach risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. In step five, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for overtopping incremental risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. The user is only asked to select the reference lines that will be displayed on the risk matrix. The chart allows for five options, report, all, traditional, controlling, and none. This is the last step of the levy overtopping risk tool. The Levy Overtopping Economic Risk Worksheet contains five steps. The worksheet is linked to the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet and thus has to be completed after the previous worksheet has been completed. Step one is to assess the overtopping flood hazard and consequences. The user needs to enter the breach and non-breach economic cost that correspond to the overtopping events and AEPs entered in the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet. As with the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet, the breach economic cost for the incipient overtopping event are not shown as an input because the worksheet is set up to use the first overtopping depth. This is because the MMC SOP does not evaluate an incipient overtopping event. The top of levy breach economic cost is for breach prior to overtopping with different breach parameters. If the team were to have developed an incipient overtopping scenario as part of the study, that data can be used to replace the equations in the green highlighted cell. Note that if data is not available, then the cells should be left blank. As with the Levy Overtopping Life Risk Worksheet, once all the data has been entered for step one, the incremental cost table is generated from the breach and non-breach tables above. The user then needs to determine if it is reasonable to extrapolate overtopping depth and AEP to where breach and non-breach consequences are equal. A drop-down list is provided in cell C52. The results of step one are shown in a graph and the right margin allows the user to adjust the bounds of the X and Y axis for display purposes. In step two, the estimated system response curve for overtopping with breach is populated directly from the levy overtopping life risk worksheet. Step three estimates the overtopping non-breach and incremental levy risk based on the data entered in steps one and two. No user input is required for either of these steps. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for the non-breach economic risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. In step five, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for the overtopping incremental economic risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. 
user is only asked to select the reference lines that should be displayed on the risk matrix. The chart allows for two options, all and none. The total incremental life safety risk for Levy's worksheet is used to develop the incremental risk matrix and total risk for the structure. Prior to entering the data into the table, the user is asked to determine if overtopping with breach is non-credible. CF12 contains a yes-no drop-down menu. If no is selected, then A16 to H16 will use the annual probability of failure and average life loss information calculated in the levy overtopping life risk worksheet. If yes is selected, then the annual probability of failure and average life loss will be set to zero. Once the overtopping scenario has been chosen, the user can then complete the potential failure modes table. The user will enter a PFM description, columns A and B, the annual probability of failure range, columns C and D, and the average life loss, columns F and G. As with exercise 6.1, the worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine point estimates. The PFMs are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure, APF total, and the total average incremental life loss, AALL total. The APF total and the AALL total are used to calculate the weighted average incremental life loss in. The final step of the worksheet is to develop the total incremental life safety risk for reporting and plotting the results. The worksheet uses the values calculated for the APF total and the N from the previous step in a visual basic function to calculate the centroid and then the range. The mean values from above are used to calculate the AALL. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes, the total non-breach risk, and the order of magnitude total incremental risk. The chart allows for five options, report all, traditional controlling, and none, to add reference lines from a drop-down list contained in C41. The total incremental economic risk for levies worksheet is used to develop the incremental economic risk matrix and total economic risk for the structure. The worksheet is linked to the total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet and thus has to be completed after the previous tool has been completed. The user will enter the average economic cost range that corresponds to the failure modes entered in the total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet. The worksheet will calculate the geometric means of the range to determine point estimates. The PFMs are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure, APF total, and the total average incremental economic cost, AAEC total. The APF total and the AAEC total are used to calculate the weighted average incremental economic cost, or dollar sign bar. As in the total incremental life safety risk the worksheet uses this to calculate the results for reporting and plotting purposes. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes, the non-breach risk, and the order of magnitude total incremental risk. This chart allows for two options, all and none, to add reference lines from a drop-down list in cell C41. We finish off the Levy SQRA worksheets with the total annual probability of inundation for NFIP accreditation recommendations. This sheet requires no user input. It pulls information from the levy total incremental life safety risk and the levy overtopping life risk worksheets. The calculated API is used to determine the yes, no, and inconclusive recommendation as previously discussed. Total incremental life safety risk for DAMS worksheet is used to develop the incremental risk matrix and total risk for the structure. The sheet is similar to the total incremental life safety risk for levies worksheet, except that an overtopping failure mode should be included in this table if applicable. The user will complete the potential failure modes table by entering a PFM description in columns A and B, the annual probability of failure range in columns C and D, and the average life loss in columns F and G. As with exercise 6.1, the worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine the point estimates. The PFMs are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure, APF total, and the total average incremental life loss, AALL total. The APF total and AALL total are used to calculate the weighted average incremental life loss in. 
The final step of the worksheet is to develop the total incremental life safety risk for reporting and plotting the results. The worksheet uses the values calculated for the APF total and N from the previous step in a visual basic function to cap calculate the centroid and then the range. The mean values from above are used to calculate the AALL. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and order of magnitude total incremental risk. The total incremental economic risk for dams worksheet is used to develop the incremental economic risk matrix and total economic risk for the structure. The worksheet is linked to the total incremental life safety risk for dams worksheet and thus has to be completed after the previous worksheet has been completed. The user will enter the average economic cost range that corresponds to the failure modes entered in the total incremental life safety risk for dams worksheet. The worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine point estimates. The PFMs are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure, APF total, and the total average annual incremental economic cost, AAEC total. The APF total and the AAEC total are used to calculate the weighted average incremental economic cost or dollars on bar. As in the total incremental life safety risk, the worksheet uses this to calculate the results for reporting and plotting purposes. A chart is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and order of magnitude total incremental economic risk. DAM Hydrologic Hazard Stage Frequency Curve Worksheet is used to determine the annual exceedance probability for a given loading condition in the DAM Non-Breach Life Safety Risk and DAM Non-Breach Economic Risk Worksheets. Before using the worksheet, the user must specify the elevation datum by choosing it from a drop-down list. If feet NGV29 or feet NVD88 is chosen, then nothing else is required for this step. However, if the other option is chosen, then the user must specify the datum in cell G12. The user should input the stage and corresponding annual exceedance probability in ascending order with a maximum of 95 points. The worksheet converts the AEP to a Z value for a cumulative probability using a standard normal distribution. Any of the 95 points which are not used should be left blank. The DAM non-breach life safety risk worksheet is used to estimate the non-breach risk of the structure. This worksheet contains five steps. Prior to step one, the user must specify the elevation datum by choosing it from a drop-down list. If feet NGV29 or feet NVD88 is chosen, then nothing else is required for this step. However, if the other option is chosen, then the user must specify the datum in cell G12. Step one plots the estimated flood hazard using the data entered in the dam flood hazard worksheet. The right margin provides plotting options to adjust the X and Y axis and up to five horizontal reference elevation lines that can be defined by the user. Step two is to estimate the consequences. The user needs to determine the day and night consequence exposure rates, which correspond to the fraction of time for which a life loss estimate applies. Next, the user will need to fill in the table with the data associated with the stage and non-breach life loss consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. The user must define the AEP where the non-breach life loss is zero. The MMC SOP assumes zero life loss at TAS. If better information is available to define the threshold of life-threatening releases, the user should enter the AEP such that stages are in ascending order. The user may enter up to three other events and consequences to define the curve. The worksheet uses the data entered in the consequence table to plot AEP versus average life loss. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. Note that if data is not available, then the cell should be left blank. Step three estimates the non-breach risk. The data tables are generated from data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for this step. The data tables will be used in step four. The worksheet uses the table to plot a stage versus AALLNB graph. The user should ensure that the plot appears appropriate. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and the plot for non-breach risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. This is the last step of the DAM non-breach life safety risk worksheet. 
The DAM non-breach economic risk worksheet contains five steps. Prior to step one, the user must specify the datum elevation by choosing it from a drop-down list. If feet NGV29 or feet NAVD88 is chosen, then nothing else is required for this step. However, if the other option is chosen, then the user must specify the datum elevation in cell G12. Step one plots the estimated flood hazard using the data entered in the DAM flood hazard worksheet. The right margin provides plotting options to adjust the X and Y axis bounds and up to five horizontal reference lines that can be defined by the user. Step two is to estimate the consequences. The user will need to fill in the table with the data associated with the stage and non-breach economic consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. The user must define the AEP where the non-breach economic cost is zero. The MMC SOP assumes zero economic cost at TAS. If better information is available to define the threshold for damaging releases, enter the AEP such that stages are in ascending order. The user may enter up to three other events and consequences to define the curve. The worksheet uses the data entered in the consequence table to plot an AEP versus average economic cost graph. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. Note that if the data is not available, then the cell should be left blank. Step three estimates the non-breach risk. The data tables are generated from the data entered in step one and step two. No user input is required for this step. The data tables will be used in step four. The worksheet uses the table to plot a stage versus AAEC NB graph. The user should ensure the plot appears appropriate. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for non-breach economic risk based on the information entered in the previous steps. No user input is required. This is the last step of the DAM non-breach economic risk worksheet. The precise order of magnitude estimate calculator was developed to assist the user in converting discrete estimates of annual probability of failure and consequences into order of magnitude estimates. The order of magnitude estimates of failure likelihood and consequences can be used during a team elicitation or as a check to ensure that the data is being stated properly in this worksheet. The user inputs a precise probability estimate, life loss or economic estimate, and the worksheet uses a visual basic function to determine the plotting position using the SQRA order of magnitude methodology. Risk matrices are generated based on the user input. That, com that completes the general overview of the spreadsheet. Now we are going to walk through a guided example using the guided example data tables, which are contained in the same spreadsheet as the exercises. Using the module six guided exercise dam data that was provided, we will enter the data into the appropriate worksheets. We start with the total incremental life safety risk for dams worksheet. Using the risk assessment data that was provided, Enter a short failure mode description, then using the drop down menus, enter the corresponding APF and life loss data. The worksheet will calculate the geometric means of the range to determine point estimates. The PFMs are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure, APF total, and the total average incremental life loss, AALL total. The APF total and the AALL total are used to calculate the weighted average incremental life loss in. The final step of the worksheet is to develop the total incremental life safety risk for reporting and plotting the results. The worksheet uses the values calculated from APF total and N from the previous step in a visual basic function to calculate the centroid and then the range. The mean values are used to calculate the AALL. Here is the risk matrix showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and the order of magnitude total incremental risk. Note, PFM1A is below the 1 times 10 to the minus 7 line, and so it is not shown on the chart. Next, we complete the total incremental economic risk for DAMS worksheet. The worksheet is linked to the total incremental life safety risk for DAMS worksheet, so the failure mode descriptions and APF are automatically populated. Using the drop-down menus, the user needs to enter the corresponding average economic cost range. The worksheet will calculate the geometric mean of the range to determine point estimates. The PFMs are then summed by the geometric means to determine the total annual probability of failure, 
APF total, and the total average annual incremental economic cost, AAEC total. The APF total and the AAEC total are used to calculate the weighted average incremental economic cost, or dollar sign bar. As in the total incremental life safety risk, the worksheet uses this to calculate the results for reporting and plotting. A matrix is generated showing the geometric mean of the potential failure modes and the order of magnitude total incremental economic risk. Note, PFM1A is below the 1 times 10 to the minus 7 line and is not shown on the chart. The Module 6 Guided Exercise DAM data provides the user with 89 rows of stage frequency data. We will copy that data and paste it as values in the DAM Hydrologic Hazard Stage Frequency Curve worksheet. You will note that the data was provided in ascending order. Since the worksheet allows for 95 points and only 89 points are provided, the remaining rows are left blank. You are given that the elevations were provided in feet in AVD88, so this is recorded by using the drop-down menu. The DAM Non-Breach Life Safety Risk Worksheet is the next step. Prior to step one, the user must specify the elevation datum by choosing it from a drop-down list. Since feet NAVD88 was used for the stage frequency curve, we will use the same datum on this worksheet. Step one plots the estimated flood hazard using the data entered in the flood hazard worksheet. The right margin provides plotting options to adjust the X and Y axis bounds and up to five horizontal reference lines that can be defined by the user. Step two is to estimate the consequences. We will need to determine consequence exposure rate based on the information provided. Since the exposure rate corresponds to a fraction of time for which a life loss estimate applies, we simply convert the hours into percentage of day. For the day, 10 over 24 is equal to 0.42, and for the night, 14 over 24 is equal to 0.58. Next, the user will need to fill in the table with the data associated with the stage and non-breach life loss consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. The user must define the AEP where the non-breach life loss is zero. Using the data provided, we will enter the corresponding stage, AEP, and day and night non-breach life loss. The worksheet uses the data entered into the consequence table to plot AEP versus average life loss. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. Step 3 estimates the non-breach risk. The data table is generated from the data entered in Step 1 and Step 2. No user input is required for this step. The data table will be used in Step 4. The worksheet uses the table to plot stage versus AALMB. The user should ensure that the plot appears appropriate. Plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for non-breach risk based on the information that we entered in the previous steps. This is the last step of the DAM Non-Breach Life Safety Risk Worksheet. The last worksheet to be completed in this guided exercise is the Non-Breach Economic Consequences Worksheet. Step 1 is similar to the Non-Breach Life Loss Worksheet. The user must specify the elevation datum and a plot is generated using the data entered in the Flood Hazard Worksheet. The right margin provides plotting options to adjust the X and Y axis bounds and up to five horizontal reference lines that can be defined by the user. In step two, using the data provided from the guided exercise example, the user will need to fill in the tables with the data associated with stage and non-breach economic consequences using the yellow highlighted cells. The user must define the AEP where the non-breach economic cost is zero. The worksheet uses the data entered in the consequence tables to plot AEP versus average economic cost. Similar to the non-breach life worksheet, the plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. Step 3 estimates the non-breach economic risk. The data tables are generated from the data entered in Step 1 and Step 2. The worksheet uses the table to plot stage versus AAEC. The user should ensure that the plot appears appropriate. The plot options in the right margin allow the user to adjust the X and Y axis bounds. The vertical reference lines are referenced from step one. In step four, the worksheet generates the plotting data and plot for non-breach economic risk 
based on the information entered in the previous steps. This is the last step of the non-breach economic risk worksheet. This completes the guided exercise using the RMC SQA Calc toolbox for a dam. You should now be able to generate the total incremental life safety and economic risk matrices and the non-breach life and non-breach economic risk matrices. Thank you for your attention. This concludes module six of this course. Be sure to complete homework six to get credit for completing this module. In homework six, you are given levy data for use in the RMC SQA Calc toolbox. Use this data to develop the total incremental risk, overtopping incremental and non-breach risk, and the total mean annual probability of inundation of the levied area, and provide an NFIP accreditation recommendation. Once complete, please send your homework to RMC training at usace.army.mil with the subject as DLS 105 homework 6 to help us keep track of the submittals. Thanks in advance for your cooperation. If you have trouble with the homework, please reach out to the instructor through the RMC training email address on the screen or by emailing me directly. We will go over a solution to the homework assignment during the live question and answer portion, which will be in a few weeks. If you have missed the live session, a recording will be posted to the RMC website. Please check the course schedule for dates and times. Thank you for your attention and we will see you again in a couple weeks.